Hello, Mighty Miners and all other friends who are joining us today. This is Mr. Keith with Mr. Keith's Content. Today for Mr. Keith's Content, we're going to be talking about an American symbol, the White House. But before we get into the readings, let's see what our vocab is. The first word that we're going to need to know as we read through this, architect. An architect is someone who designs buildings, gardens, and certain other things. Capital. Capital is the city in which a state, province, or nation has its center of government. Mansion. Mansion is a large and expensive home. Symbolize. Symbolize means to stand for or represent something as a flag symbolizes a certain country. The White House. The White House is where the President of the United States lives and works. The White House is in Washington, D.C., which is the capital city of the United States. George Washington, the first president, chose the place where the White House was built. The White House used to be called the President's House, the President's Palace, and the Executive Mansion. President Theodore Roosevelt changed the name to White House in 1902. A symbol of freedom. The White House helps symbolize or stand for American freedom and democracy. Democracy is a government in which people are free to elect their leaders. The president who lives in the White House is chosen by the American voters. An American president does not own the White House. A president lives there only during his time in office. Voters freely elect a president every four years. Building the White House. The United States government held a contest in 1792. People were invited to enter drawings of a house for the president. Architect James Hoban's design of a three-story mansion was chosen. The new home was not finished in time for George Washington, but in 1800, the country's second president, John Adams, moved into the partly finished home. George Washington was the only president who never lived in the White House. And here we can see a painting of George Washington here overseeing the building of the White House. The original White House is smaller than what it is today, for at the time it was only built to be the house. We have since added on to the house through the years. It is also said that President Washington was there when they first started building it and helped put down the very first stone to build the White House. Public rooms. Visitors are allowed in just a small part of the 132 room White House. Some of the rooms open to the public are the East Room, the State Dining Room, the Red Room, the Blue Room, and the Green Room. During a tour, visitors can see furniture and other objects used by past presidents. And here we can see a picture of the Red Room. For obvious reasons, it is called the Red Room. So you could probably guess why the blue room is called the blue room and the green room is called the green room. This is a picture in 1903 of the annual egg roll contest at Easter time. Notice that the White House is no longer just the house at this time, that they have started building onto it. President Theodore Roosevelt requested that they build a separate part to the White House for his own office as president. The East Room. The white and gold East Room is the largest room in the White House. Guests of the president often gather here before an important dinner meeting. Singers, dancers, and musicians perform in the East Room. Daughters of presidents have been married in the East Room. The funerals of five presidents were held there. President Theodore Roosevelt's children found the huge East Room perfect for roller skating. Private rooms. Most of the White House rooms are private. The living quarters for the president and the president's family are on the second floor. The third floor has rooms for the president's many guests. Other private rooms include a library, bowling alley, swimming pool, movie theater, and the president's Oval Office. And here we can see a picture of President George H.W. Bush in the Oval Office at his desk. When you become President of the United States, you get to choose what desk you have in the Oval Office. 
Here, President Bush has chosen a desk that I believe he used when he was Vice President of the United States. Many presidents ended up using a desk called the Resolute Desk. The Resolute Desk was actually made from wood of a ship that sank called the HMS Resolute. Over in England, Queen Victoria decided to have some of the wood built into a desk and given to President Hayes as a gift. And every president since President Hayes has used the desk in the office or up in their private office on the second floor, except for three presidents. After President Kennedy was no longer president, the desk was removed from the White House and eventually put in the Smithsonian. And so President Johnson, President Nixon, and President Ford did not use the desk. But after President Ford, President Carter requested the desk come back to the White House, and every president seems to have used it since. The White House grounds. The White House is surrounded by 18 acres of lawn and gardens. Except for a few special days, the lawn and gardens are not open to visitors. On the Monday following Easter, the lawn area opens to children for an egg rolling contest. The garden opens for the public tour in springtime. Changes in the White House. The White House was almost 150 years old in 1948 and it was beginning to fall apart. President Harry Truman and his family moved out of the White House so that it could be rebuilt. Nearly every part of the White House, except the outer stone walls, was rebuilt. After four years, the Trumans moved back into the brand new White House. You can see here the picture of them redoing everything. All the walls had to come down and they put machinery in here to do it. They figured that they needed to do this because when President Truman was the president and his family had to move out, his daughter had a piano on the second floor and the piano leg actually broke through the floor and was sticking out of the ceiling from the, sec the first floor. The White House burns. During America's War of 1812 with Great Britain, British soldiers marched into Washington, D.C. President James Madison and his wife, Dolly, were whisked away. British soldiers burned the White House to the ground. Only stone walls remained. Dolly Madison rescued a portrait of George Washington before she left the White House. Workmen began to rebuild the White House in 1817. So because of the Great Fire, they lost everything on the inside as well and had to start over. The picture that Mrs. Madison saved was this painting of George Washington, but it wasn't an easy task to get it out of the White House it, because it wasn't just hanging on a nail in a frame, it was actually attached to the walls, and so the frame had to be broken away for her to get to the painting, which she then gave to somebody to hold for safekeeping. So I hope you learned some new things about the White House where the president lives. Until next time, friends.